all the way from Providence, Rhode Island, live in the Minute with Mary studio. Welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Welcome, my name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. Man, another listen to feedback episode. Let's go, ladies Let's and gentlemen. Let's do this. Let's do this. Agenda free listen to feedback. Can't wait. I'm so excited. All right, uh, everybody, thank you for uh, your patience this week. As you know, it was the holiday here. It was uh, Screw England Day uh, just recently. And, uh, you know, we took some time to ourselves Technically, the next episode has already come out if you're listening to this in real time. Mm-hmm. If you, as always, if you're listening in the future, you don't care. You're just listening to it right away. Yeah. So either way, we're here. We're ready to talk about everything that you had to say about Outland episode 703, Death Be Not Proud. We got a bunch of people watching us live right now as we're podcasting this. People from Paris, France. We got people from uh, Massachusetts. We, uh, we, we're all over the place. And if you're place, listening to this go. and you usually join in live, dinner fash, I did not send out an email or text as this is impromptu since our kids are finally busy. So Blake and I scrolled away and are able to do a quicker podcast recording. So apologies that I do not did not send out my usual text reminder, but we are doing a regularly scheduled live Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to cover episode 704. That being said, That's true. let's jump into the listener feedback for episode 703 you know what mom and i realized i didn't i didn't do the whole thing right it's we're okay. supposed to release the hounds we're yes. supposed to play all right all right all right it's a holiday weekend it's breaking you know, all the things rules things are always different you know what screwing all right so we've got our friends at join the nerd clan.com tuning in now of course this of course is our like most beloved community of friends who so graciously donate as little as two dollars a month to keep the mary and blake podcast studio going yes we appreciate you we appreciate every single one of you no matter what technically it's a minute with mary studio now it's a minute with mary studio correct <laughs> correct amando all right so Who do we got first, Blake? All right, the first one comes from Maureen. She says, this episode gets four kilts from me. My good is a blink and you'll miss it moment when Jamie looks baffled after he mentions Lizzie's kids' parents. Like every time he mentions that family dynamic, he is taken aback. The throuple is too much for him to wrap his head around. And it's so funny to watch. Great facial expressions from Sam Hewen there. My bad is that no one is questioning the fact that Jamie is having magical dreams about the future. Okay, Claire. You are a time traveler, so nothing surprises you anymore. But hold on a second. Your husband, he can't time travel. Yet, he has visions of telephones and electric light in his dreams. Is she really just thinking those are just dreams? Is no one wondering if maybe there is some sort of supernatural connection Mm -hmm. between Jamie and his descendants that allow him to somehow check in on them physically? Come on, phrases. Be curious about this. I mean, I'll tell you this. Book is very different than show. <laughs> I Period. Yeah, whatever, so, man. So, right. uh, agreed. Agreed then, in regards to the show. Then, Marine's great is that simply the concept of the letters. I love that Jamie and Claire came up with that idea of keeping Roger and Bree informed through the ages by writing them letters that would someday be delivered to them. Now... I'd be curious how they set up that delivery, but in any case, I just love that they got to communicate with them like that. Mm -hmm. I'll point out an inconsistency in the story, though. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense that Dougal McKenzie was there to receive... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maureen. Mm -hmm. Makes Mm -hmm. no sense that Dougal McKenzie was there to receive the gold on the shores of Scotland way back when. Historically, what is commonly referred to as the lost Jacobite gold arrived after... Culloden. Even Arch says that the gold got there too late to make a difference, meaning the cause was lost by then. And since Dougal died before Culloden, how could he have been there to take a third of it? 
I say someone got their storylines, wires crossed there. Bam! Just like that. A winner! Yep. Yep. If, if Marine is confirming what I'm saying, I'm just going to say... I'm right. <laughs> okay. All okay. right. RR Studio <laughs> wrote in saying, probably suffer here as a book reader because this episode made sen- all made sense to me and I enjoyed it very much. The good was the long shot of the truck traveling the long windy dirt road through the glorious Scottish countryside. And I'm going to stop there because yes, I've said it before. I will say it again. Scotland in the show Outlander is its own standalone character in our hearts and souls. And when we get to see Scot- like Scotland and then the Highlands and it could, I could honestly, whether it's a horse being ridden through the highlands or a car i will watch it that could be a screensaver for me yeah so i love it i agree with you it is so good to be back there even if it is in the future the bad according to anything to do with the beardsleys reproducing and loving (laughs) it in full view of the community major ick and given the moors um of the time inexplicable um i agree like that time frame it just wouldn't have made sense the great also finding ad so alive and purring was the chef's kiss after all the tragedy and loss on the ridge yeah it's only a cat but i cried same same uh the music has been consistently amazing and even the opening is growing on me this season is proving to be a peak outlander which is pretty remarkable for a mature show five kilts onward to the scotland and i gotta say yes the music has consistently been amusing here we are technically at the date of recording this episode 704 has come out we still do not have the soundtrack we are now halfway through the season and don't have it bear yeah. mccreary what magical stuff do you have up your sleeve that you cannot release it because it means to me that there's lots of spoilers in his music yeah. that he can't be dropping and that's why it's not well, I mean, here. he was out there dropping rings of power with every episode. Granted, it's probably a different. It's label, very different. Yes, you know, and you know the pr- production rights are probably different. I'm just still. saying. I'm just saying for particularly people who are just show watchers, not book readers, there are going to be twists and turns taking place. That I wonder if Bear just had to keep quiet, and that's why the album hasn't been out yet. Yeah. All right. Next, we got some voicemails ready. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Dina from Wee Lindsay, California. Aww, hi, Dina. If you've seen Lindsay Olives in your grocery store, that's my town. Cool. Oh. I'm a longtime binge listener, and I finally caught up. Yay! This is my first voicemail. All right. I'm commenting on Outlander episode 703, Death Be Not Proud. Okay. My kilt rating is 4.8 because Blake encourages the use of decimals. <laughs> he does. I do. He does. My GPGs important. for this episode are my good... Roger and Bree sitting on the steps of Lollybrock, chasing the company of ghosts. My bad. The first bucket of water Jamie threw at the fire didn't even get close to the window. <laughs> Sheesh, I did not notice the king that. of men wouldn't whiff that bad. <laughs> My great. Claire hearing Adso in the woods yes. and giving him a snuggle oh, before they oh, left the ridge. Snuggled. Blake, oh. I may not be from Boston. Yep. But it's my favorite city in the U.S. Okay. Oh. It's a wicked pizza. Yeah, it is. Happy treason day. Hope Aww. everyone keeps all their fingers. <laughs> oh, we did. We got stuck in a flood, which is so That's true. That New is England. absolutely true. Uh, by the way, it's not a wicked pizza. I know. It's just wicked pizza. It's okay. Unless you're referring but to a specific tried. thing. Like, hey, this fo- th- this is a this is a wicked pizza phone. Yeah, there needs to be a noun after it. Wicked yeah. pizza just, that's is just, just adjectives. That's just the descriptor. Yes. Just how it goes. Descriptor. Uh, and I saw a meme the other day where we it was like- We drove through like almost all of New England. I saw, I saw a meme the other day that was like, somebody in America- is waking up today without realizing that this is the last day they have all their fingers. <laughs> and I was like, yep, absolutely true. All right, let's get to the next one. You call in any time, Dina. I'm, I'm ready for it. Howdy, Mary and Blake. This is Michael from Orlando, Florida. Hi, Michael. With my feedback for Outlander episode 703. I will begin with my GBGs. Good. Time out. I think Michael should be doing a podcast. You hear that Seriously. voice? Them pipes, those golden pipes. They are. You, all right, Michael. The box with Jem's name on it. I was very happy to see it at the opening of this episode, already knowing what was inside. Mm. Bad. Ian recognizing William. Ian knowing that William is Jamie's son is not a bad thing in itself. However, in the movie The Wrath of Khan, Khan recognized Chekhov as a member of the crew of the Enterprise. The problem with this is that the Chekhov episode with Khan there. is in season one, and Chekhov did not appear until season two. Right. The best fan theory is that Chekhov was in the lower decks and not yet a member of the bridge crew. 
Getting back to Ian, in episode 406, Blood of My Blood, Jamie tells Lord John that Ian is out hunting with some of the Cherokee neighbors, and we don't see him once in the entire episode. Uh-huh. Ian was reprising his bye-bye role. Therefore, I ask, was Ian in the lower decks of the cabin spying on the visitors? Great. The letters contained within the aforementioned box. These letters help to bridge the gap between the two storylines now mm-hmm. separated by two centuries. In conclusion, I will give this episode 4.5 tilts. Mm. All right, Michael. And by the way, just In for conclusion. your just for your so exceptional fancy, for your exceptional Star Trek reference there, thank you so much. You get this. Nerd! Love it. Love it. Great job. All right. Uh, let's get to the comments. Next comment all right uh ba, ba, ba. all right uh rr studio right i already read that one. Oh, you did okay sorry yeah you did uh janelle mckenney says originally i was going to give this episode 3.8 kills Ooh. janelle you and i are on the same page which is very low for me usually i'm the one giving out all the kilts after a second viewing though i decided to bump it up to four kilts after two great episodes meeting and exceeding my expectations this one fell flat this is due to the retrofitting of storylines, some info dumping, and weird editing of scenes. And for all the amazing transitions Blake pointed out, there were a few scenes that lingered and needed to be cut a few seconds sooner for a better flow linger. of the episode. I know Blake is in love with Tony after 702. Listen, listen, Janelle, it ain't after 702. It's all the way back. It goes all the way back to her BSG days. Get it right, okay? Um... But Tony has said time and time again that it doesn't matter if they don't have everything from the books because they can fit it in later. But this episode is proof that it does not always work that way. Mm -hmm. I understand the writer of this episode is new, and in many cases, she did her best with how transitional this episode is and how much retrofitting she had to do to fix past storyline errors from previous writers. But there were also some clunky lines and scenes. Sam and Kat did the best they could with what what was given to them. Sam continues to hit it out of the park with three episodes in a row, which makes him my great. The look on Jamie's face when he realizes the virus spreading too fast and far to save the house was just amazing. That was showing, not telling. My bad was the retrofitting in the info dumping. It's like they sat down in the writer's room to map out season seven and had a come to Jesus moment and realized that all the important uh-huh. things they left out in the previous seasons uh-huh. were all of a sudden important again and needed to be squeezed in. <laughs> so while many of these sweet moments in 703 were for some and uh, were great for some, in my opinion, they didn't carry the weight they should have because the writers and possibly the editors who cut scenes didn't build up the relationships with the bugs and set up important storylines too late. Mm-hmm. When Merdina died, it was hard. Who the hell's Merdina? Mrs. Bug. Oh, see, that shows you how freaking little I, we know about Mrs. Bug. I don't even know her, her name. name. Yeah. Mer- like, sure. Whatevs. <laughs> Merdina. She could be called Pam for all I know. Um, when Merdina died, it was hard to understand Ian's distress over killing her. I think Mary was right in that it would have been more powerful to have Ian bothered by his kill count instead of mourning over Mrs. Bug. The gold plot seems contrived because Arch does a big info dump. The gold was only barely mentioned back in season five, and as Blake pointed out, how could Dougal pick up gold if he was dead? Now, I didn't hear Arch say the gold came after Culloden, just that it was too late for the cause. Is there a chance that Dougal had just come back from getting the gold when he was killed by Jamie and Claire back in season two? Uh, fair. I mean, that, uh, Janelle, that, that is a possibility. While it's sweet that Ian is excited about Cousin Willie, the elephant in the room is that Ian wasn't actually there when Lord John Grey and William came to the ridge back in season four. Jamie tells them his nephew was away hunting with friends, and this choice was made because there wasn't enough room to have Murtaugh and Ian around the dinner table on set. And you see... That's the thing, ladies and gents. If you need these characters to be on set, make room. They can get an extra chair. He could sit in the freaking figure it corner out corner and eat his food. And that's what kind of drives me crazy with a show that's as good as Outlander. It's like these little things that just pop up, hmm. and you're like, you get what, confused. Like, what are you thinking? 
Like it, it reminds me of the Starbucks cup in, in Game of Thrones. Yes. Like figure that out. Uh, yeah. You know, and or, or like remember back in the day in like the first second season when they put the wrong Chiron up in the episode and then they had to change it later on. Yes. It's like, come on, these this is attention to detail, man. We got to figure that out. I got gotcha. you. Drives me crazy. Peg Rogers wrote in, said, hi, Mary and Blake. I want to add my thoughts to some of your recap. First, regarding Ian and his guilt over Mrs. Bug. Yes, I agree that the show didn't give us enough for the bugs to understand Ian's guilt and that he wouldn't have felt the same if he had killed Arch. I think his guilt stems less from Ian's recent killing spree and more that of, one, he had a relationship with Mrs. Bug. That we get a tiny bit in his dialogue. But two, is more because Mrs. Bug is a woman. And at this time, you didn't kill women. Men are raised to understand their role and to be a protector of women. So I do understand that. Eh. Like, you don't just go around. Now it's like a woman killing spree, right? We've got Malva. We've got Mrs. Bug. I, I understand. Stats of a nerd. Second, the timeline related to the Jacobite gold and Dougal getting a third. Uh, getting a third. I rewatched that scene. The line from Arch was that it came too late yes. to make a difference to the cause. Now that it came after Culloden. And in thinking back to season two, I don't believe that Culloden was that time. I believe it came much earlier. Then when they were on the march to, to London and then turned back, it was clear that the cause was over then. The men were starving. There wasn't any food to be found and there was a lack of cannon and other ordinances. Morale was in the tank. I believe the gold likely came to shore around this time, but the country had been scoured for food and military necessities and there was none left to be had and it was no longer possible to import these items. Third, Jamie's dreams. I agree. The show has not built this storyline strongly enough. However, there have been breadcrumbs all along. In an earlier season episode, I don't remember the one, Jamie dreamed that Brie had a birthmark behind her left ear and Claire confirmed she had. And that was when, I believe they were on the boat. It was after uh, Claire just came back and they were talking about different things. Uh, episode two this season has Claire questioning Jamie about his dreams in the future. And in that scene, they did address the oddity of his future dreams. So, of course, that's when he was talking about electric light. Also, Jamie said that these future dreams have only been happening for the past couple of years, essentially in the time since Jamie broke the opal and they realized he could travel. In that episode, they talked about how the traveler gift might be much stronger when both parents are travelers. I think that they have discussed Jamie's gifts before off camera, unfortunately, and believe that there's something he has that they don't have which is why when they didn't react too much when Jemmy read Mandy's mind and told them that she could hear the gem I think Jemmy is sharing his special gift with Jamie through Jamie's dreams so I I, I I'll buy all of that yes and and um yes I appreciate the breadcrumbs before um I just think that the show hopefully on the flip side like these could continue to be breadcrumbs as we build up to something more that then we you know because they're so casual like maybe it's meant to be casual but we analyze this show so we're not looking at anything casually right no i i I will buy all of that jemmy the whole thing what he said and reading mind kids say weird stuff all the Mm -hmm. time like we said in the last episode however it's still (laughs) i don't care if something was said off camera i don't care that somebody he talked about a birth the guy said he saw a telephone. Yeah, so you're acknowledging, okay, cool, birthmark, okay, yeah, cool, electric sure. light, like but you're like, light. and Fiona, the name. Like, yeah. It's just showing that it's he's leveling too, up. Yeah, it, it's like, yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> he got he got the freaking mushroom in Mario. Yes, and and no one's seen Mario grow eight feet. <laughs> it's, okay, like it, that's what it's like. Yeah. It, it, okay. All right. Here, let's get the next uh, voicemail. Okay. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Anna from Perth, Western Australia. Hi, Hi Anna. Anna. Just giving my review for Outlander Sit episode three. I loved this episode. I gave it four and a half kilts. Nowhere near as blow my doors off, knock it out of the park as last week, <laughs> but still a great job. My good, Jamie's kilt is back. Yes. It feels like season one with the kilt and all I the beautiful agree. scenery and Scotland yes. coming up. I guess that's three things, but who cares? <laughs> what ifs? I could fit much more in that category. Stats are for nerds. My bad. The bugs just weren't done justice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They are not log-, log carriers in the books, and I didn't feel anything near what I felt when reading the same storyline. Mm-hmm. I know the show is a show and the book is the book, but I feel that this was quite important. My great were the bits that made me feel, yes. which were when the letters were being read and written, and also the Adso scene. Oh. Oh. That's the kind of emotion and acting that stands out and gave me all the feels and Agreed. all the tears. I saw like a behind... Oh. my time. Oh, okay. Oh. Ah, got to be quick. Um, 
cats singing and all the teal that they were wearing. Yes. Another one, Ian's face. Sometimes he twitches his cheeks and the dots move, which made me smile. (laughs) And the transition between the two fireplaces in the past and the future Mm -hmm. and the two couples reading and writing the letters. One nitpicky thing, which I'm not going to fit here, so I'll do one more letter. Uh, One more. Sorry, Anna. We only get one. We only get one. This ain't the finale. Oh, yeah. We only get one. That's the rule. You got to get a minute 30. That's how we do it. Okay. Okay? All right, let's get the next one. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Katrina calling from England. Hi, Katrina. Katrina. Um, uh, This is the first time I'm calling in. All right. Um, I will just get to it. All right. Um, Don't be like Anna. Say quickly, my good (laughs) uh, for this was the... It's a relationship between Jamie and Claire. Um, I believe in their relationship actually a lot more this series than I have done the last couple of series. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's just the way they've been written. I feel like Jamie's just a lot more well-rounded. He's been a bit flat or a bit 2D of late. I totally um, agree. I don't know if anyone would agree with that. But I um, my, my feeling is that they... Listen, I do. <laughs> And that's what's most important. Oh, okay. All right, Blake. <laughs> Anna will feel differently. You only get one voicemail. I'm here for you, Anna. Minute 30. That's what you get. Okay. <laughs> it just seems to be a lot more compassionate, despite the fact that we don't have all the scorching sex scenes. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm invested in them more now. Um, maybe that's uh, their maturity or maybe it's mine. <laughs> um, my bad was Claire's reaction to Jamie's clairvoyant dreams. It was a bit like when... Claire told Jamie that people had landed on the moon and they just didn't really care Right. um, or seeing that bothered. Um, My great, it's not really a great, but actually it's my question for you is um, Claire's beautiful scene of the Schubert Ave Maria um, is taken from, I think, the 1820s. And um, I I don't think we're supposed to believe that she's, you know, stolen it. But um, my question would be (laughs) if you were... Claire, and if you want to pass something off as yours, mm. what would you take? Um, believing very well that everyone would be dead by the time it comes out, so no one would be. I already know. Any yeah, I already wiser. know mine too. Would you take a song? Would you take a, a story oh. or a play and uh, retell it as yours? Or you think you're just messing with time? Let me know. Bye. What, Blake? All right. No, no, you go first. You go I first. would. She already did it. Peanut butter. Like, if oh, I could yeah. be the one to be creating peanut butter. Uh huh. Even if I'm not paid for it, just to know that I brought it into the world and if it's easily accessible at any port of entry, mm-hmm. I'm here for it. Peanut butter. Oh, see, now you t- I was only considering songs and like entertainment. Oh. I wasn't considering It's like, like that movie where the guy stole all the Beatles songs. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, there was yeah. a whole movie about yeah. this uh, and I can't remember the name I of the movie. I think I say peanut butter because to me it seems simple. I wouldn't be smart enough to do some like crazy engineering things like Brie is able to do. Um, and if I didn't have the appropriate instrument, I wouldn't be able to bring about any songs unless it was just with my voice. Yep. So my main instrument wasn't even made at this time. So um, I would I would quite literally remake the movie yesterday. <laughs> and I would, I would take all of the Beatles songs awesome. as my own. You just because, be sitting Blackbird. <laughs> yeah, singing Blackbird. Except I, you are tone deaf and you don't know how to play the guitar or anything. So you no. just be sitting on a porch, Blackbird singing in the dead of night. <laughs> Take these broken wings and learn to fly. <laughs> <laughs> and people would be like, that's the worst song. He sounds like a Blackbird calling. That is horrible. You would just, yeah. They, no one would, would hire you at pubs. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm glad that oh. I was able to share peanut butter idea with you because oh, man. I don't think your songs would work. All right, let's get the next one. Mary and Blake, hi, Marsha from Ohio. Marsha! Episode 703, Death Be Not Proud. I okay. give this episode a solid 4.85 kilts. I enjoyed it tremendously, but I felt it was hard to top the emotionality of the last episode. Okay. My good arch bug giving me all the phantom of the opera vibes um sing for me claire you know and i was just waiting for the organ to come in but it never did um ian um and waiting for him to have something worth losing all the goosies all Mm -hmm. the goosies my bad it was minor but you know jamie and claire cleaning up the remnants of the fire they were just way too clean even though they were smelling of soot and all of this stuff she says it right 
Jamie wearing a white so, shirt that was pristinely white. I mean, come on. Don't you have an old t-shirt, Jamie, lying around? <laughs> just My great though was yeah, Bree and Roger visiting Lollybrock. It just felt like a special homecoming. Um, but it was kind of funny. Oh, here's a realtor. And oh, it's for sale. So just funny. Life works um, my honorable mention was the scene at the end with Ed. So, oh, all the feels. I yes. love that scene. It was such a sweet, tender goodbye, not only to the wee cheaty, but to the ridge. Mm-hmm. And I love the flashback. My hit it out of the pack award like, goes to John Bell this week. The emotions on his face at the realization of it being Medina bug. Um, it needs an outstanding soundbite. That's all for me. Mm-hmm. See you next week. You, makes me wanna shout. you know what? And that's not for the outlander thing. That's for Masha. You getting it right. Hitting it out of the pack. I take care of it. That, that was great stuff. All right. Look at uh, Masha doing that, huh? Isn't that crazy? Good job there, Masha. Well done. <laughs> All right, uh, Marvin, are you ready to get to the next voicemail? I sure am. All right, let's do it. Of course, my computer is is not letting me do it. So, you know, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do, just we'll read the one. next one. Okay. This one comes from Nicole. She says, 4.8 kilts from me. The episode had a few little hiccups, but overall, I loved it. Especially the seamless transitions between JNC and Roger and Bree's time. There was a lot of exposition in the episode and the, with the jacket bike gold and the involvement of the bugs, but better late than never. In answer to your question, Blake... Okay, here we go. About when the French gold arrived in Scotland, I believe it was in March of 1746, so a month before Culloden, so too late to help the Jacobite cause, but would explain how Dougal was able to be one of the men that took a third of the gold. You see, Marvin, like, okay, hold. You know what? I guess what I'm getting at here mm-hmm. is this. I don't understand how all these people can have different accountings of when the Jacobite gold showed up. You we don't got, we got like people in the show or people watching the show? People watching the show, book readers, show watchers, historian. When the freaking gold show up? That's what I want to know. You know, I'm going to Google it right no, now. Okay. Why don't oh you vamp gosh. me? Oh what? my gosh. Blake, I, I'm not even prepared for this. Well, just, just, just vamp okay. for a minute. Vamping. You I'm know, vamp. stats just are for about, nerds. Yeah. Stats are for nerds. It's all I'm going to keep saying. is you, you need to be wearing your stats are for nerds shirt at this point. I know. In the meantime, I'm going to step in. And read the next comment from Laura Larson. Laura Larson, who has her same last name with the exact hey, same spelling. Hey, fellow Larson. Yay. She Wait, gave it 4.8 it kilts. Good old Danish folk That's right, right there. The good was the box. The box. Oh, that box. Yeah. Not that box, but that box. <laughs> no, I was thinking wee box. <laughs> I, I say wee box because I was just eating another of the Loch Ness Bakery spiced ginger cookies. And so my brain was thinking wee box. And I was like, oh my God, did Laura Larson get the wee box? No. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But she's talking about bee box with the letters. Such history waiting for them. Living documents right in their hands. Laura's bad was disappointed actually that Amanda's surgery was so glossed over. Only mentioned by Fiona. All the drama of the jewels, Lord John, Wendigo, and the goodbyes and drama of what they arrived in the, uh, in the right time. I rather wanted to see how they managed in being period clothing, the definitive diagnosis, the drama of the surgery on a baby. Basically, the whole reason for them leaving was put on a far back burner I was left wanting. You know what I'm going to want to know? Is Laura a book reader or a show watcher? Mm-hmm. But as a show watcher, Blake... Do you agree with this? Do you agree? Like, would you have wanted, you know, when Claire comes back from the stones and she's in different period clothing, would you have wanted to see that them show up in this modern time frame, dressed mm-hmm. the way that they were uh, venturing and, and trying to get to obviously like most likely, you know, Boston yeah, <laughs> to like try a, to go the, have baby heart they surgery show up to like Hertz to get a car. Do you think you that know? that would have been worth your time? Yes, absolutely, because it's a total fish out of water moment. Okay, and I absolutely think you would have liked to see that that versus yeah, because like Fiona saying, "I'm so glad Mandy's well." Yeah, and like I appreciate what they did and why it may have been cut. Like I appreciate Mm -hmm. it, but having that fish out of water moment where people are like, 
Oh, are you a reenactors or yes. like having them try to yes. figure out how to get around the fact that they're wearing seventeen whatever hundred mm-hmm. clothing? Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, it's a fun little moment. Uh, the whole re- okay, and then uh, Laura's great was I loved the flashbacks and how they fit so well together. It made me think of when my husband and I bought our home, raised our kids, then said goodbye when we sold. Ah, uh, the memories. All right, here, here we go. Ready? Okay. Uh, bah, bah, bah. In 1745, Prince Edward Stuart arrived in Scotland, in France, to claim the throne of Scotland and England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we know. Okay, we got all that. That was season two. Why don't you, why don't you show up? <laughs> all right. Spain pledged 400,000 livres, or Louis d'Or, whatever, per month for the Jacobite cause. However, getting his money from the, to the rebel army was with the difficulty. The first installment, said via Charles' brother Henry, who was resided in France, was dispatched in 1745. The French sloop Hazard, renamed the Prince Charles, successfully landed its monies on the west coast of Scotland. Unfortunately for the Jacobites, the Richards were soon captured by Clan Mackay, who were loyal to King George II, in the skirmish of tongue. Okay. In April 1746, the ships Mars and Bologna arrived in Scotland with 12 with 1.2 million livres, another Spanish installment, plus a f- large French supplement. However, on learning of the Jacobite defeat at the Battle of Culloden on 16 April, the ships left, unloading only the Spanish money at Loch Nan um, UAMH. Okay, sure. Uh, Arasag on the 30th of April, the same place where the prince had disembarked the year before and would later embark for France. Thus, the seven caskets of Spanish gold arrived in Scotland, as the Jacobite cause was then by was by then lost, with the army scattered and the prince and his lieutenants in hiding. The money was to be used to assist the Jacobite clansmen, then being subjected to the brutalities of the government forces of the Duke of Cumberland, and to facilitate the escape of leading Jacobites to the. I feel like I'm in continent. Professor Bin's history class. <laughs> so. So can you give me like the recap because this is when I would have gotten the notes from my friend and taken. Okay, a so sleep here here's the deal. There was there was some money sent by the French. We know, we know. that we were landed there. in Scotland. We we get that part. That Blake. was taken. It was captured by that was captured by Clan McKay. Yeah, they brought that to King George II. Okay, okay? great, awesome. And then in April 1746, the Spanish brought some money, mm-hmm. and but the problem was. They only delivered some of the money because they realized that the Battle of Culloden had been lost. Okay. Right? And then they said, screw this. Yep, yep. And then that was that. Okay. We're taking our money back. All right. So it looks like the money was delivered after the Battle of Culloden. Yep. So which means Mm -hmm. I'm right. How could Dougal be there? If it's after the Battle of Culloden. Wonderful, Blake. I'm just throwing that. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Okay. Settling it straight, thanks to Wikipedia. Listen, don't mess with Alassim when it comes to don't history. mess with Blake with his history. <laughs> what are these dates? They're all wrong. I'm like date mates. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's get to the next uh, voicemail, <laughs> okay. shall we? Yes. Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Gloria from Salem. Hi, Gloria. Hey, Gloria. Three of Outlander was Your amazing. Cousin from Four point five jokes for me. My good was clear finding Adso, thank goodness. Yes, right. He looked pretty beat up and out of sorts there in the forest. Agreed. Poor thing. Cats are survivors, so he'll be good. Mm-hmm. My bad was Mr. Bug in general, but definitely when he stole general. gold little by little from River Run, when he threatened Ian about the future, yep. when he has something worth taking, mm-hmm. and the fact that he wanted to kill Rolo. Seriously, dude. How dare you? Ian should not feel guilty of anything. He was protecting Jamie, yep. thought it was Mr. Bug, plus it was nighttime in Wicked Dock. Wicked Dock. Ian Wicked is a good man, and in my opinion, should never have told Mr. Bug a life for a life and tried to give him his own knife in order to kill him. Yeah, that would be my Jamie bad. Jamie Claire would never have allowed that anyway. And my great were all the letters in Jeremiah's box. I remember them from the book, and I cannot wait for them to open more. They're going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. That's it for this week. Can't wait till Friday. Bye. So I was going to say, mm-hmm. Marvin, that I kind of, I'm kind of on board with Mr. Bug being all pissed off. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to come get you. One of these days when you got something worth losing, yeah, that's when you'll see me. And I'm kind of out on Ian doing the whole Merry thing, right? Or Pippin. Was it Pippin? Yeah, Pippin. When Pippin's like, take oh, me. take me and say, I'll be your humble servant, you know, in Lord of the Rings. I know. I know. 
You know, yeah, like, you know. come on, Pip. What are we doing? Stupid Pippin. Like, and that's basically what Ian did. He Pippined. Well, and especially, once again, taking it from the show-only perspective, like, Ian's mourning of Mrs. Bug in the show is not worth it. No. Versus, you know... <laughs> <laughs> well, we know those of us who've read the books, um, and also for those of you show workers who've been hearing the people from the book saying, hey, it was a lot more. She was family. You know, then it would make a little bit more pull and more sense as to, oh my gosh, I can't believe I killed this woman. So, yeah. All right. Well, again, Marvin, uh, yes. sorry. I, I, That's I, it. That, I was, that was period. Okay. Sorry. All right. Period. End of story. Yes. All right. Let's uh, take a minute to thank our partners yes. for Outlander Cast this season. We box. We box freaking rocks. It, it is does. the most wonderfully magical surprise because it's a subscription-based service. And if you've been listening to previous episodes of Outlander Cast, you know the drill. You get a monthly subscription of five gifts sent straight from Scotland that support local artists, that support local creators, and um, just wonderful people who put their heart and soul into these items and it's not just like any old item no, they're I sending know. items that really kind of bring about the essence of scotland to you and your doorstep every wee box it's carefully cured carefully around a monthly theme right with as mary said the five gifts and the treats they're often exclusive it can't be bought outside of scotland you want to go to like you know the packy down the store down down the down the corner you can't. You can't. You can't get the stuff that you get in the movie <laughs> box. Don't think that you can. It's a great value. And then there's also the free magazine written with Scotland's top journalists. I free, love the little magazine. I know. The, a free exclusive virtual tour with yep. internet sensation Andy the Highlander. Andy. And plus a soundtrack to listen to as you unbox and use your gifts. And as a matter of fact, the theme for this month, for, mm-hmm. uh, for, well, for uh, upcoming August... The Queen's Highland Home Wee Box. Oh my gosh. So we're talking Balmoral, baby. We are talking Balmoral. As the world remembers the Queen one year on, we salute her beloved Highland Home of Balmoral with a special commemorative gifts. And it's, of course, shipping in August. You don't want to miss this. So if you are a fan of the TV show The Crown, or if you are a fan of the beloved and now deceased Queen Queen Elizabeth II, not the first. No. That was yes. a while ago. Yes, agreed. Then this is definitely the wee box for you. Holy flipping smokes. They even give you some peeks here. They oh, give, they wee, gave us, wee they, little peeks. They gave us a wee peek at the first gift. It's a Queen Elizabeth II commemorative mug. Oh my gosh. There's a timeless simplicity you to the pole of You could drink tea home. out of it. Yes. And, by the way, Mary, yeah? wee peek number two, uh-huh. Balmoral blend tea. As done. Well. I'm done. I'm going to do it. I'm Enjoy so a tea fit for a queen created exclusively by Genier Tea and Queen Elizabeth II in 2019. The tea is served and sold throughout the Balmoral Estate. Oh my gosh. And as a matter of fact, it includes six estate black teas from three growing regions. When creating the blend, it was essential to the Balmoral team that the tea reflected Scotland's influence on the commercialization of of tea, as a matter of fact. Yeah. As as such, they took inspiration from Scotland's historic tea pioneers, Robert Bruce, James Taylor, and Robert Fortune. Go to webox.co.uk uh, and use the coupon code CAST10. CAST10. C-A-S-T-1-0. For 10% off at your checkout. Trust me, you're going to love oh my it. Gosh. Get that special tea made yes. by James Taylor. Maybe he'll sing you uh, Sweet Baby James on the way that you're... <laughs> oh my gosh, like... <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, back all right. to our listener feedback. Yes, all right. Uh, let's see, where are we here? All right, the next one comes from, we already did Laura. Laura, fellow Dane, thank you so much. The next one comes from Laurel Gallucci. She says, this was another great episode, and oh my, so much happened. These episodes are action and info Packed. Agreed. I came up with a new word today. A little late, but better late than never. Never. While watching 703 funeral scene, I turned to my husband and said, I wonder what those Phrygians think about Mrs. Bug Croak. And then I realized Fraser's plus Ridgens equals Phrygians. Oh, Ridgens. very, very creative, Phrygians. Laurel. All right. So there you go. And I know that we're having, uh, now that we're leaving the ridge, but the name will stick for me Love forever. It. My good. 
Jem and Jamie having bro dates to a cave. Agreed. I love how much so time cute. they spend together doing things in the books. I've only read through the Fiery Cross, but it is so sweet that they spend time together. Yes. The bad. I don't understand Mr. Bug's sudden turn into a really bad apple. I mean, why? They worked for the Frasers so loyally for years. It just didn't make sense to me. My great? She has three total. It's because now we can't go on a cruise. <laughs> is Disney Cruise. Yeah. Go totally see minded. Michael the Mouse. Uh, uh, da, da, da. This is my first ever great that includes the Mackenzies and not the Frasers mm. because I love them so much. The assumption that Roger had Bree purchase Lallybrock. Please, oh please, buy it and find family history buried or hidden somewhere. I can't wait to hear about it. Also, very excited for Jamie and Claire to go back to Scotland. Question. Is Jamie still a wanted man, or will he be able to walk around without worrying in Scotland? Oh, another great Jamie and Claire's repeat, you are my home, oh. and you are enough comments. So Yes, good. please, and thank you. Oh, I love it, love oh, it, love goodness. it. So good. Um, I do want to note that we had talked about like um, Bree's money, and it is shown in the show because obviously like it's talked about in the books it is shown on the show when claire is leaving she does say like okay brie here's the deed and here's our bank account stuff. sure fair. so we that is covered fair um and i say this because i watched the preview to episode 704 and i watched 704 so like when you you know when you watch an episode they're like previously on and of course this episode is now coming out after episode 704 aired so i yeah. feel okay saying this they say on the previously on they re-show that scene okay but, so but, i was like thank you thank you stars but, for reminding me <laughs> but how'd they get from the stones in mm -hmm. south carolina mm -hmm. to boston okay that's the thing okay like you're just showing up like there I you mean, are. Can't you just go to your bank? What bank? It's not like it's banking today. This is back in like the late 70s. Well, I don't know. There's no like app. You know, you can't. They they, they didn't have Shawmet. You a friend. You called Joe Abernathy. They didn't have Shawmet Bank you just called in Joe. South Carolina you called or Joe. North Carolina, wherever he, the hell they are. You're going to be fine. You're fine. <laughs> All right, the next one comes from uh, Addy Frisch on Facebook. Addy says, I loved this episode, but have a question. Did we just skip over Mandy being critically unwell and needing surgery? Shouldn't them arriving back in the future, adjusting to new time period and looking after their dying baby be a major story plot? Show watcher only here. Marvin, Okay. thoughts? Not needed. Not needed. Yeah, I agree. Like as much, it feels weird, right? Because we had so much buildup of like, holy smokes, this wee little baby needs surgery. And this is the catalyst for this monumental game changing uh, event that that the Max are going back. Um, but that was just the reason to go back. And I will yeah. tell you, being back has its own stuff they were going to be obviously you know just even stumbling upon lollybrock like there and and getting this um box with a letter so going forward that isn't important and it's okay it's okay mm -hmm. to say with fiona i'm glad mandy's well yeah i agree I, with you that i would have loved to see them arrive and figure all that bits out of how do they get from point a to point b but once again if they left it out, then you just need to f tell yourself it's because it's not necessary moving forward. It would have just been fun for us to watch. And had we had all the time in the world to watch Outlander, sure. then probably they would have added it in because it would have been cool. Yeah, but I it's would, not necessary. Yeah, I would say, I would agree with you, Mary. I'm, I'm going to co-sign on that, right? Because it's not that we don't know if she can survive. It's how do we... It's just the fact that, like, once she has the surgery, we know that she's going to be okay. Yeah. Right? Like, it, and Claire says as much, mm -hmm. which that's the reason why. It, it, essentially, Amanda, Mandy's hot thing is nothing more than just a device, right? It's just the device to get yes. them from A to B. And all of us care because it's this sweet little baby. Yes. And it rips the family apart, meaning they have to go to a different time. Yes. But... But I don't think it's necessary... To see to be covered in the, the whole thing in order to get where they get to. Yes. I think it's okay for them to say, 
hey, gee, thank God we had that surgery. Glad to yes. see that she's okay and we're moving on. Yes. Right? It's not about the battle for her life. Agreed. It's getting them there to Boston. Every, it's and, getting them there to America and in that's, that time. And that's what we all have to think about. You know, we have to think, okay, what did I miss? And is it really that crucial? Um, and that's why I do think that they did Mrs. Bug wrong. Because this whole storyline of Ian being so beat up and being so sad and offering his life to Mr. Bug, and now we've got creepy Mr. Bug looming over our heads, that to me was wrong. Yes. It was important, so that should have been a bit more woven in to have us as viewers love Mrs. Bug a little bit more or see and appreciate their love a little bit more. But as of now, what they have shown us in the show is that how the Max got from point A to point B, surgery, all that kind of stuff, isn't 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 important going no, forward because it 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 doesn't affect the overall plot. Yes. Whereas Mrs. Bug dying affects Mr. Bug, yeah. right? Which thereby affects the plot. Uh, I, and I imagine by the end of the season, this guy's just going to show back up again randomly, right? Who knows, Blake? And that has to serve as a motivation. Right. Yes. Um, the motivation once they get to America in the future, the motivation is to get her the surgery, and then the whole thing is over with. Correct. And that's different from Mr. Bug because Correct. Mr. Bug will carry forth the. And Claire the, even most says that, like you said, Claire said this is a very common surgery, yes. and they survive. Yes. So we as viewers don't need to have it looming over our heads. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. Like will she or won't she? Yes. Yeah, right. This is like, this is a quick fix. If Claire said frame. something along the lines of, "Listen, the only chance that she's got is going to the future," and even then, correct, it, it's a one in a hundred chance, right, or whatever. We'd be nervous we'd as be viewers. Ner we'd want to be there. Then yes, yes. okay. Now mm -hmm. we got to see it. Mm -hmm. Now, now we have to see Joe Abernathy. We have to see the process. We have to see them pacing in we the need hospital. To see the Boston cream pie. Yeah, right. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Let's get to the next okay. uh, e uh, voicemail. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Camille from Hi, Camille. Indiana. Hey, Camille. I am a fellow New Englander, though. All right. And I love you guys so much. Oh, thank um, you. I became familiar with you all with the Bridgerton podcast. All right. I honestly knew a little bit about Outlander. By the way, go to MaryandBlake.com. Check out Bridgerton with Mary and Blake. Shameless Especially because plug. season three is coming up. We did just cover Queen Charlotte and it was exclusively to our friends at jointhenerdclan.com but when we wrapped that entire free podcast Free now, baby. It's free to everyone. So you just need to find Bridgerton with Mary and Blake in your favorite podcatcher of choice. Quick aside, yeah. someone had told me what are we going to do when Stitcher goes away? Is Stitcher going away? or Stitcher's is that gone. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. It is going away in well, August. Oh my God, this is like brand news to me because I'm not a Stitcher person. I'm an yeah. Apple person. No, it, it doesn't matter. Stitcher's so where nothing. do where do people who find their podcasts in Stitcher, where should they go, Blake? Apple Podcasts. What if they are not an Apple person? Spotify. Okay. That's where I would go. There, are, there we go, friends. Spotify. <laughs> so yes. yeah, don't don't download one of those stupid cast box. All like, no, don't do that. And you can listen right at MarianBlake.com. I will also say that. Yeah, that so it if, if I had to recommend there. one thing, it's go to MarianBlake.com. Yeah. However, if you just want things delivered to you, yes. um, either go to jointhenerdclan.com, right? Because oh, they yeah. have, we have their own player there mm -hmm. and it gets delivered to you. Yes, and you or, get it early. Yes, and you get things early. Or if you want... If you're on an Apple device, just download Apple Podcasts. Agreed. It's it's it, it is the best app. It is the best podcast player. And if you're on if Android, if you're on Android, go to Spotify. Okay. Uh, that also is the best podcast player for Android. All right. Let's get back to our New England friend. All right. Here we go, Camille. Um, and I actually just started watching it, and I am obsessed. Yay! All right. um, I'm actually a costume designer oh um i'm in my final year of getting my um mfa in costume design 44 years show. old yes a little late but <laughs> the mfa <laughs> you know what i'm thinking of no <laughs> the first thing that popped into my mind no <laughs> was the motherfucker award <laughs> oh my gosh blake <laughs> well <laughs> at least your degree is better than mine my degree is a bachelor of music which is a bm <laughs> The BM. Oh, Blake. I I can't believe that that's where your brain went. I don't know why. 
Everyone else's but, brain knows what um, that meant. Oh, I love sorry, it. Camille. It's sorry, Camille. Sorry, Camille can't even handle you. She's like, I Camille's liked you guys, like, and now I don't. Camille's like, get out of here, dude. With you. Okay, can you rewind so we can hear what Camille? All right. <laughs> who's almost done with her MFA, which I'm really proud of you for. I'm and at so- 44, like, it it makes me so proud when people are <sighs> either switching careers or furthering their degrees post their 20s yeah man that's it's, it takes it's so much courage but also you care about it so much more yeah i had a woman who was in her mid 40s in my music ed curriculum mm-hmm. um so she was there with all like late teens early 20s and she had already she had been a parent she was you know already living her life but this is what she wanted to do she wanted to be a music teacher and she cared so deeply about her grades Mm -hmm. she took the best notes and i'm like oh my god because she cared so much we were all yes we cared yeah we were also busy thinking about you know who's dating who what the party is that upcoming week like cramming for other stuff that now in hindsight didn't really matter did i really need to study that much for my bugs exam (laughs) yes the science class i took was about insects because why not? Because it's college. How many beers can I shotgun? I mean, tonight? that wasn't me. I wasn't worried about the shotgunning, but, um, but like I think about it, and I'm just so proud of our friend Camille for, I won't be in, being so close to How finishing this degree. How many joints okay, can please, I go stop through? Stop it! We're not talking about this. How many games of Madden can I play tomorrow? Oh my God, we I need not, to make that thank trade. Thank God happen. we met when we did. Had we met in college, I. Oh, we would not. You would not have been a big fan of mine. No, I would not. You're barely a big fan of mine now. God, I love you, but yes. (laughs) Okay, go back to Camille. Poor Camille. Rewind, Camille. Our friend, who's a fellow New Englander, is finishing up her MFA. You want me to go the whole way? No, I just go a little bit back. I just recapped for for you. Okay, here we go. I'll go back. She lives in either Indiana or Illinois. I I forgot. I think it was Indiana. Okay, she's a Hoosier. She's a Hoosier at heart. I hope, unless well, no, she's New Englander at heart. She's a New Englander at heart. All right, here we go. Who loves Bridgerton? just started watching it and I am obsessed. Um, I'm actually a costume designer. Um, I'm in my final year of getting my um, MFA in costume design, yeah. 44 years old. Yes, All right. a little Congrats. late, but um, I love it and it's amazing. And of course, the costumes speak to me. You guys yes. speak to me oh. and I am in love with it. Um, I'm not listening to your most current ones. I'm literally binge watching it and listening to all your shows, but you guys are incredible and awesome. And Thank it's you. so good to hear some New Englanders. Yes. So yeah. I love you all. Thank you so much for being awesome. Thanks, Bye. Camille. Yeah, I like that, how she dropped that real quick. Yeah. It's so good to hear yeah, some New, New Englanders. Yeah, love it. Yeah, I got to go get my coffee. Love it. Down over at the corner. That's the right. corner store next to the pack. Okay, we know, Blake. <laughs> Gosh, all right, on Facebook, Addie Frisch said, I love I already read that one. Okay, Jesslyn. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's okay. Can I do Jesslyn? Yeah, Jess- absolutely. Jesslyn said her good was shout out to the props department as a calligraphy enthusiast. The writing on the oh. letters is absolutely beautiful and helped draw me in. I love that. I used to have a calligraphy pen. How does one become a calligraphy enthusiast? It means you like calligraphy. Maybe she dabbles. Maybe she takes classes. Maybe I feel she like has a an enthusiast is a little bit more than pens. a dabbler. I feel like I'm a dabbler of calligraphy. I'm a dabbler. You are not a dab. You don't even dab. You don't even you, duh with calligraphy. I am a great calligraphist. When's the last time you've done anything with calligraphy? I. Haven't done it in a yeah, while. You suck. That's okay? why I'm saying nope. I'm a dabbler. Yes. No, you're not even I'm a dabbler. Told, I feel like an you're enthusiast is like two levels above dabble. No, anyway, her bad. <laughs> As I continue to feel like the show failed to build the bug storyline, and now we have intense stuff with critical characters who've had too little screen time. Book yes. readers have context, but viewers don't, and it's awkward. Yeah. Great hats off to John Bell. Okay. So many hugs for Aunt young Ian. He hits all the right notes, the looks, and the silent communication between Ian and Jamie during the Willie discussion were golden. Ah, fair enough. Do we I have like another it. voicemail? Uh, we do, but let's get to the next comment. Sarah Hills Johnson says, five kills. I just loved everything about this episode. I know a lot of people are saying it's more of a transitional episode. Yes. But to me, it was a gift to the book readers. Oh, a gift. I love that. All Divorce right. Lord John Gray. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the good was the cold open of the van delivering the letterbox. I literally got goosebumps. The way they interwove the letters in this episode was excellent. How about figuratively? Did she uh, figuratively get goosebumps too, instead of literally? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bad. Uh, we didn't get more of the bugs. That scene between Ian and Arch was so good. Wish they had more screen time in previous seasons. Yeah. They're great. Claire putting the property marker back up as they left Fraser's Ridge. Katrina's performance was 
so emotional. Awesome acting as ever. And the bonus was the look on Jamie's face in the scene where they said goodbye to the beard seats after he said, he's a bra wee lad, just like his parents. And friends, if you have not found, Blake and I are on TikTok, even though he's in denial. So you can find us there and on Instagram. And I created a fun little TikTok. She did. With Jamie's face. It's good TikTok. So, Don't watch it on TikTok, though. W- watch it on Instagram. And that will be called a reel. A TikTok TikTok or a reel? A re- re- reel, Instagram whatever. Reel. I don't know. YouTube short. It's fine. <laughs> potato, potato. All right. All right. Let's get to the last voicemail. You ready? Yes. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Joey from North Carolina Hi, Joey. calling in about Outlander Season 7, Episode 3. Okay. I very much agreed with what y'all said this past podcast episode about Jamie's dreams and Claire's basically non-reaction to Jamie, uh, the details about his dream, especially knowing Fiona's actual name. Thank you, Joey. I have an outlandish theory about this whole situation. Mm. Okay, hold on. Hold, wait, wait, hold on, Joey. We got we to gotta play the, uh, the music here. Yeah? Okay, here we go. And it's that this is the beginning of the explanation for how all the way back in season one, episode one, Frank bumps into Jamie's ghost, the unknown Highlander. Okay. Looking up at Claire in the window. Jamie's not just having these dreams. There's too much that's correct um, about them for them to just be dreams. This is how he time travels. He's actually there with what he sees, but in like a weird spirit form since he's dreaming. And so that would explain how his ghost was there looking up at Claire all the way back Mm. in that first episode. Anyway, I hope y'all had a great independence day. Um, and looking forward to hearing more of the podcast. You know what I'm picturing? What's that? Avatar. You know how they're like avatars when they sleep? Oh, and then when they're okay, sleeping gotcha. avatars, they're back in their human form? Yes. Maybe Jamie's like avatar. Just less blue and more kilt. Yeah. I like it. And then I bet you he like takes off when he sees Frank, right? Because he's like, oh, dude, that's Frank. No way. And he's he just like, ah, oh, he wakes up and that, that's that's it. Because you think he knows? Because I think he knows who Frank is. Oh. Huh? Just some guy walking around? Yeah, because he see like Oh, because he sees Claire. Okay. Because okay. he sees Claire. He knows okay. that Claire's there. Yeah, so Avatar Jamie. Leaves. Right. And Avatar Jamie. <laughs> we absolutely need some nerd out there <laughs> to make a blue Avatar Jamie now. <laughs> um Avatar Jamie hears Frank because he knows the story. Mm. And then he's like, Oh yeah, this is then. I gotta go. And he goes. Love this idea. Amazing. Joey. Thank you, Joey. Joey. <laughs> Bam. Just like that. A winner. Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right. Let's get the uh, last and final email. Okay. Okay. This one comes from Joni. Joni. We had just said Joey, but this is Joni. This is Joni. Hi, Mary and Blake. Just wanted to give some feedback after listening to your podcast about Outlandus episode 703. I give this episode. Marvin, how many do you think she gives? Oh, mm. positive, negative. Tell me. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, fine. I'll go for 3.5. No, 4.9. Okay. Okay. See, there you go. My good one. Callbacks. I enjoyed the callbacks in this episode. Jamie reciting Death Be Not Proud is from book seven, but for me, it was also a callback to show only moment in episode 105 when Claire is reciting another John Donne poem on the back of the lock just before she meets Ned Gowan. I enjoyed the flashback to Jamie putting the stake in the ground from carving the FR into, into the tree in season four. And for me, Claire putting the fallen stake back into the ground was also a callback to the cold open of 210 when Claire comes upon a dead soldier in the woods. And for a moment, she thinks mm. about all the war deaths she's seen, but then she picks up his pike and goes to rejoin Jamie on the way to Preston Pans. That soldier has no more need of his weapon, but Jamie's men will need it in the coming battle. Similarly, in 703, Claire driving that stake back into the ground says that she has to leave for now, but she will be back. Lastly, I enjoyed the scene of kilted Jamie leaving a stone on Murta's calm, uh, Cairn, sorry, Cairn, just as he says in the voiceover while writing to Brianna, I believe God keeps no account of time. Mm. My great arch bug scenes with Jamie and Ian. I have a different take on the bugs. Mm. Uh, to me, arch bug is a man whose identity and self-worth was tied to his position of respect within clan grant. When the clans and their way of life were destroyed by Culloden's 
by Culloden, Arch's whole personal frame of reference was destroyed as well. His wife, Merdina, or otherwise known as Pam, was his anchor in the chaos. He'd lost everything, but as long as she was by his side, there was no, there was reason to keep moving forward. I think that when he realized what happened to Hector's share of the Jacobite gold, Arch found an outlet for all of his frustration and anger by stealing back the gold that Hector had used that gold to repay his wife for all of her love and loyalty, especially in all the years since his world turned upside down in the aftermath of Culloden. I think that whole sense of dislocation and the mix of emotions that go along with it came through in this conversation with Jamie among the rubble of the big house. As for Arch's conversation with Ian at his wife's grave, I see a parallel with Jamie. What Arch said to Ian is another version of what Jamie told Richard Brown at the end of episode 701. Richard Brown did not succeed in taking Claire from Jamie, but the mere attempt was enough to warrant Jamie removing Richard Brown from existence. At this point in Jamie's life, if he had lost Claire to his natural causes, I think he would just take up residence in the cave with the Spaniard. If he lost Claire to the violence, Jamie would become Archbug as he is in that conversation with Ian. He would burn the whole world down to avenge her loss without batting an eye. I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you, Joni, on the uh, the Jamie aspect of it all. Uh, however, that is a lot to assume about Archbug um, based off of that conversation that he had with Jamie and about his wife and stealing the thing. And it, it, that's just a lot. And it's kind of, and I'm not saying that you're wrong. You're just saying from your perspective, Blake, it was a lot for you to. I, I think for the digest. show to expect you to get all of that, which Joni has probably rightfully pointed out, I think that is very presumptuous um, for the viewers to fill in that much character detail mm. without giving really anything. Uh, you're essentially what we're doing if that is the case is making up our own backstory that's what it really comes down to and I think that's irresponsible if that is the case so that is that Mary that is that that is the end of our of our listener, listener feedback. feedback there was a lot more but I can only take so much and condense it down into one hour and we want to thank all of you for participating and commenting because not only do do your comments and voicemails often make it to the show but they spur on new conversations yeah. and uh, whether you're commenting on Facebook or Instagram or of course at jointhenerdclan.com on the official feedback threads I love 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 seeing the comments that people share with one another yeah. whether it's challenging or agreeing or showing some different side to it so keep it up keep the conversation that's the reason going. why we do all this I mean 100% like, you know, if, if it didn't and add to the conversation or it didn't spawn new conversations mm -hmm. we wouldn't do it but because all of you deserve as much of a voice as we do we make the, it happen that, that's the whole point exactly so, thank you so much everybody yes. all right you ready to close this bad boy out i sure am all right let's go <laughs> Thank you all so incredibly much for tuning in to this and every episode of Outlander Cast. As we said earlier in the episode, this is brought to you by the Minute with Mary studio. So Minute with <laughs> Mary is another business adventure that I go on in addition to podcasting and being Blake's wife and mom to our little lad and lass. I help people feel more creative and confident when it comes to their makeup and skincare. And in this month in July, I've got a really cool special going on where you pretty much get to build your own bundle. So if maybe you've got a wedding or a shower going on this summer, or maybe you're just looking to spruce things up or you're looking to enhance your skincare, I've got you covered. You could easily just go to Minute with mary.com to peruse the different items i have there in my store or you can search the hashtag minute with mary on facebook or instagram and reach out to me. I actually have an exclusive group on Facebook where I share loads of free tips and tricks. Um, do the same on my Instagram page as well. And I'm just happy to help you out. I do have a coupon code for listeners. They can go to minutewithmary.com slash discount yes and you can get my best-selling 4d mascara if you like the look of like full voluminous lashes we give it to you at a discount because you are a listener of ours so you can check it out over there or as i said head to minutewithmary.com to see this month's specials which or, covers like my entire site or you can be a member at jointhenerdclan.com yes. join at the 
Sassanok level, and you'll get 10% off of any purchase mm-hmm. that you make at MinuteWithMary.com. Yes, and if you are one of those Sassanoks, you just need to send me a message to let me know because I don't know everyone that's on it. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'll be able to make that happen for you. So thank you so much once again for those of you who have already supported me at MinuteWithMary.com. It's my pleasure. And thank you, of course, to everybody at JoinTheNerdClan.com who make all of this happen here at uh, Mary and Blake Media and the Minute with Mary studio. We owe everything and all of the things to you. You make this all work, and we are happy to have you as part of the Nerd Clan and what we're doing here at Mary and Blake Media. Oh, man. Wouldn't be nothing without you. I am ready, though. I'm ready for 704. Good. We're halfway through the first half of this season. We are. It's, I mean, it's so flying. technically we're a, a quarter. Of the, yes. we're technically we're a quarter way for the you know, for through the whole season. Through season seven, yes. But half of the way through season 7A, mm-hmm. which uh, I feel like this time has flown. I agree. I agree. But it's been so good. And I think that that's why it's flown. It's just been so exciting and good. And it's summer here. So we've yes. just been able to kind of like eat it up and, and love it. And not only podcast about it once, but podcast about it a second time with you, our listeners. So I will say it's been a little bit of a step back for 703. However, I think 704 is going to be a critical point here uh, for season seven. They need this. They need this catalyzing moment that sends us forward now that we're a quarter like we've gotten through we've gotten through most of the build up mm. the closing out of six introducing new stuff for seven okay what are we going to do with, what's the jumping off point okay. it's this episode 704 it's coming up all right so it this needs to be momentum building it needs to it needs to get us going well let's see if it does that for you uh, so we'll see what happens <laughs> my name's mary my name is Blake. and you've been listening to outlander cast <laughs>